to the Hardy house. Here I have uh, a newly decorated living room, uh, fresh for the uh, Christmas season, of course. So I've got the, the decorations behind me and some in front. And anyway, I've got beer news this week, three stories. Uh, the first is going to be about Black Friday shopping. The next is going to be uh, about a story, a hoax story involving Corona Extra. And lastly, I'll be talking about a Michelin star uh, brew pub. I am your host, Chris Hardy, and this is the Straight Beer News for the week ending November 27th, 2016. So starting off, since this past week was Thanksgiving, um, always on a Thursday, the day after is of course Black Friday, which for a number of people means different things. If you're not in the retail industry, uh, hopefully you're not, uh, you have any number of traditions that you uh, abide by. You might be sleep in, take multiple naps, watch football, or for a large portion of the population, go shopping and take advantage of some uh, season deals as Black Friday usually is the official kickoff of the holiday shopping season. And usually with that, there are a number of deals to attract customers to the, the various retail shops. And as it regards to beer, of course, this seems like a, a new thing in my opinion that um, beer stores have started having uh, Black Friday sales as well. Uh, traditionally, the, the one that's probably the most known is uh, one that I've talked about before, uh, and this is Goose Island's release of the Bourbon County Stouts. And uh, if you want to review my past, uh, my past news story regarding that, I had some interesting news about this year's vintage, this year's version that has uh, just been released this week and how it differs from previous years. And you can click on the eye right over my shoulder in the upper right corner to review that and see what's new about this year's um, compared to the past years. So that's the one that's most well known, of course, is a Goose Island, but also my radar had gone up that there are various shops across the country trying to attract the men, the beer lovers, to come into their shop and buy specialty beers that maybe they've been holding on to, that they had maybe caved, or uh, kept for this special occasion that they were going to have uh, good deals on these on these items. So uh, I had also heard and seen stories uh, and pictures, accounts of lines out the doors of certain shops, uh, specifically those ones that had to deal with uh, the Bourbon County release. But I'm also curious to know what that what those shops were like you um, near you. If you attended any of these, if you waited in lines. If there was any particular beers, rarities that you were hoping to get, uh, and uh, did you get them? So let me know what uh, your experience was this Black Friday, if you did it, or what you think of people who do that. Is that something that's just too ridiculous and too off the scale for you? I'd be interested in your thoughts, uh, so drop me a line in, in the comments box below, and I'd be happy to respond and we can talk about our, our opinions on what we think. So, in the forefront of the news in the past couple of weeks, um, especially post-election, I've been hearing a lot of um, lamenting or just belly aching about faux news stories. Um, these are mostly stories that get spread through Facebook or they, they're presented as journalism, but there's no really any journalism credibility behind any of the uh, the news article or the statement at all. So it seems to be, at least the perception is in the media, that there's a, a great prevalence of these faux news agencies or stories that get spread around and passed. And one particular story that I came across this week as a, a faux news, or maybe it's a hoax, um, involves Corona Extra, actually uh, the, the founder of Corona. As the story goes, the, the founder, uh, whose name is Antonino Fernandez, who was uh, born in a small little village in northern Spain uh, called Cervales del Condado. It has a small little village of about 80 people. This is where he was born almost 100 years ago. And he grew there as a young boy, and then as he aged a little older, as a young man, moved to Mexico. And his story goes that he fell in love, married a woman, and got his start in the brewing industry in Mexico through his wife's family. Uh, he got into the Grupo Modelo and eventually rose to the rank of CEO in the 70s. Well, 
Mr. Fernandez just recently died this year, uh, earlier this year in August, at the age of 99. And the story is, the, the hoax faux story, was that in his will he had left uh, a certain amount of money, 200 million approximately, to the individual villagers in, this, in his hometown in Spain. Not exactly sure how this story got propagated or where it even started from, but it grew large quickly. A number of agencies grabbed onto it, Time Magazine, um, The Independent in the UK, many veritable, um, largely reputable uh, news services took the story and ran, and it was just a matter of time, hours or even a day, before those stories were removed. Uh, it turns out it was false. Upon further uh, investigation, uh, Mr. Fernandez was a large philanthropist and he has a foundation in this in his home village and a spokesperson for the foundation confirmed that there was no indication through his will that any money was being left to individual uh, uh, villagers. So it turns out that it's false uh, but it did kind of open eyes to those who were listening or who, who were reading that um, Mr. Fernandez of Grupo Modelo was quite the philanthropist and so stories as they were taken down, began to run um, about, though this story was false, here's Chef Shine a Light on his philanthropy and how great of a guy he was. And so that's, hopefully that's what we can learn about him and take this story that was originally false and turn it into a good heartwarming story about uh, a billionaire from the beer industry doing good things um, even after his death. My last story is about a brew pub in Chicago receiving a Michelin star this past week. If you're not familiar with the, uh, the Michelin star, what that means, it's a very prestigious award uh, given very rarely and only to the top of the top restaurants and chefs. Now Michelin stars are very hard to come by for sure. And the thing about them is, is they're very secretive. No one's really sure the, uh, the exact process. There's, imagine if you're familiar with uh, the retail industry, most of us at one point or another have worked in a retail store or restaurant and have been aware of this concept of, you know, mystery shopper, someone who comes in for an agency or some sort of a service to kind of grade and rate the service that they get, uh, whether it's um, helpful or whether there's uh, issues with the service, the people that work there aren't very friendly, what, whatever it may be. So. Michelin has these people who go from restaurant to restaurant, the ones that are most uh, highly rated and reputed, and they mystery eat. And they, if they like what they see, they let some time go by. Maybe a year or so later, they come back and try again. And if it's as good, or hopefully better, then they're put into consideration for a star. So this Michelin star went to a brew pub called Band of Bohemia in uh, northern Chicago and the thing that's really interesting about the Band of Bohemia story is that they've really only been open for a year so the, the process or the process that people thought was the way of earning a star maybe was a little bit altered or, or maybe they were just so good and they so impressed their their mystery person that uh, they were nominated pretty quickly and so they rushed through in this process the co-owner and the, the brewer, Michael Carroll, he has a history with Michelin stars uh, in, in his past experience. Uh, so he's uh, a classically trained chef and uh, spent some time uh, prior, to Band of, prior to starting Band of Bohemia. He was at a restaurant in Chicago that has three Michelin stars. And he says that his experience there, he was a, a bread maker, and his experience there uh, led him into the path of brewing. He said he'd, he'd always brewed kind of throughout his um, his last 20 or so years since he'd been a, a university student. Um, he liked brewing, was attracted to brewing, and it's a similar process in his mind as, uh, as baking bread. Making bread's got a lot of the same ingredients with the, with the yeast and the grains. And uh, so it's something that he enjoyed anyway. And when he had the opportunity to, to leave this uh, prior restaurant he went into brewing and if you're familiar with Half Acre they're a pretty well-known brewery in the Chicago area he jumped on board there and helped to brew some specialty beers for them 
Then when the opportunity arose, he started his own. He started the Band of Bohemia. So now with his experience with baking and cooking and his, uh, his experience and his training for uh, being a chef, put together with his brewing, he's very well thought of and apparently Michelin thought so as well. So if you're in the Chicagoland area for maybe you live there or just for a vacation, for a visit, might be a place to stop by and see what you think. Try the beer, try the food. Uh, it's apparently top notch, one of the best in the country. So uh, give it a shot if, you, if you're in the area. Well, that'll do it for me this week, guys. Uh, again, I appreciate you watching. I am your host, Chris Hardy, and I do this every week. I stop by my channel or subscribe if you'd like. Give me a thumbs up as well, I appreciate that, and uh, drop me a line in the comment section. Also, if you want to reach out to me or follow me on any of the social media, I am on Twitter, at Straight Beer. I am also pretty active on Untapped and Instagram, and you can find my contact information for those down below in the description. So, that'll be it guys, thanks for watching, have a great week, take care.